everybody, it's Layla, Health Education Manager here at AI Arthritis, and I am here for my day three and final in-person debrief. And I am excited to report back on one session and one abstract. And the first thing that I will be talking about is the session that I went to. The session that I attended was called Fun in the Sun, the Benefits of Vitamin D from bone to immune regulation to infection reduction. And so I pulled out 10 in facts that I thought patients should know from this session. It was very interesting. There was some information that was more about mice models than about actual patients and autoimmunity. So I'm not gonna talk anything about that, but I did pull some of the important facts to talk about. Okay, one. Vitamin D deficiency is very common in autoimmune diseases and is associated with more severe disease and worse outcome. Ensuring adequate vitamin D status is really important. So for most autoimmune diseases, it is important to just double check to see what your vitamin D level is. Every time I've went to a new rheumatologist, they have double checked what my vitamin D level is and prescribed me however much they felt like I needed a vitamin D. In the years where my lupus was really bad, I was on a pretty high uh, dose of vitamin D. I think I was on like 10,000 10, IUs per day. And then eventually once my, once my, levels increase then they decreased it and i've now been on i think 4000 i use per day the number two fact is long-term use of 2000 i use of vitamin d per day is shown long-term use of 2000 i use per day of vitamin d is shown to reduce to safely reduce the incidence of autoimmune disease by about 22 percent after five years so this study was done over a really long period of time. And they did show that when you do take the vitamin D supplement regularly and long-term, it does help. But once you do stop taking it, it does, continue, it does dissipate quickly and go back to how it was before. Vitamin D has a stronger protective effect against autoimmune diseases in individuals with low or normal body mass index compared to those who are obese. While vitamin D supplementation may have small benefits on pain and disease activity in rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, the evidence is not strong enough to recommend it as a primary treatment. I've never seen vitamin D help me with any pain or anything like that. If anything, it's more seasonal depression or emotional, mental symptoms rather than physical that vitamin D, um, I've noticed vitamin D helps me with. Vitamin D is essential for proper development and regulation of the immune system, especially in the first 10 years of life. And so if all, we all probably remember back in the day with the got milk campaigns and things like that and how they started to fortify milk with vitamin D as well. And so they added that into all of our school lunches and things like that when we were kids so that we can try to get enough calcium and vitamin D when they, they found out that it was so important, especially in the first 10 years of life. Vitamin D deficiency in early life can lead to long lasting effects on immune function and increased susceptibility to infections. Ensuring adequate vitamin D status is still recommended for patients with autoimmune diseases to help prevent bone loss, even if the effects on the autoimmune disease itself are modest. I think no matter what, I, for me, I'd rather have the vitamins than not have the vitamins, especially if it says that it helps our autoimmune diseases, even if it is just by very minimally. I think whatever it is that we can take that's not a medication or anything like that can just aid in helping our health status with as autoimmune and autoinflammatory patients. I think in my opinion, I think that for me, it's I'd rather be safe than sorry and just take extra vitamins if it's recommended. And further re research is needed to determine the optimal vitamin D levels and dosing for preventing and managing autoimmune diseases. And yeah, one like blanket recommendation is, is not good because you wanna do the blood serum to see how much vitamin D someone may be deficient and so that you can supplement properly and just double check that. But for an average person, they do recommend 2000 IUs a day in order to just maintain. 
So that is the first session that I went to. And it was very interesting to also talking about that in utero, when um, a woman is pregnant, it is also important for vitamin D to be present when the immune system is developing in the baby in the third trimester. So that was very interesting to hear as well. And they said prenatal vitamins has a good amount of vitamin D, so you may not necessarily need it, but maybe double checking with your rheumatologist and seeing if any additional vitamin D could be helpful. The next thing that I'm gonna be talking about is an abstract. And the abstract is called, Exhausted T-cells are increased in autoimmune diseases and predict response to anti-TNF in RA and SPA patients or spondyloarthritis patients. And this is another session that is about new up and coming biomarkers that are starting to be discovered and it's very interesting in our interest in personalized medicine. It's so important that these scientific discoveries are happening so that we can better tailor our decisions on treatment for patients and, and that doctors are, are more well-informed about what medications may work versus not. And so I'm going to go into this a little bit. What are T-cells? T-cells are a type of white blood cell that's crucial for immune defense. And exhausted T-cells, so after prolonged activation, T-cells can become exhausted, losing their ability to function effectively. This state is marked by the expression of very specific markers. And so we've heard a lot about CAR T cell therapy, and that's basically regenerating your T cells. And so clearly T cells are a really big thing in our autoimmune diseases, as well as B cells, but this is specifically about T cells and the implications that these exhausted T cells may have on Sjogren's disease, RA and spondyloarthritis. And increased exhausted T cells in autoimmune diseases show that patients with Sjogren's disease exhibited higher levels of T cells, of exhausted T cells compared to those with RA, AXPA, and healthy individuals. Association with disease activity. In Sjogren's disease, higher levels of these T cells correlated with an increased serum of immunoglobin. And it basically in, is indicating that is a, it's a link to disease activity. So basically they like, the Sjogren's patients that they were testing, they saw a lot of very high levels of those exhausted T cells. And basically what they were saying when they're studying these three different diseases is that in RA and AXPA patients, the elevated baselines of exhausted T cells were associated with a better response to anti-TNF therapy. And so from this, they've seen that measuring levels of exhausted T cells could help predict how a patient might respond to specific therapies, allowing for more tailored treatment plans. And exhausted T cells may serve as biomarkers for disease activity and treatment efficacy, aiding in monitoring and managing AXPA, Sjogren's disease, and RA. So the next thing that you can do is if you are interested in seeing how well your anti-TNF is working or interested in seeing your levels of your exhausted T cells, something that you can definitely discuss with your rheumatologist and let them know that you've heard about this test and see if they may know anything about it. And of course, always practicing with shared, de shared decision making and closely working with your own team to make sure that you are making the best informed treatment um, decisions based on the newest scientific insights. And there are maybe some rheumatologists that don't know much about this and things like that, but maybe if you had sh can show them the abstract from this and things like that, that it may be very helpful in your healthcare. So those mm. were two, those were two sessions that I thought were very interesting and had more of an overarching inclusion of the different diseases that we have. Although this study specifically does talk about Sjogren's disease, RA and AXPA, the information of exhausted T cells can probably be tested in all of our other diseases as well to see how that may relate. And if the correlation of the numbers also 
uh, relates to the disease activity. And yeah, that is the wrap up of my last in-person debrief for Go With Us 2024. I'm hoping to still be able to give you some more information once we are able to watch more sessions or even just go through more of the abstracts. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email us back from this video, comment on this video on YouTube, or if you are in our Go With Us Slack Elevated Experience, send us a message. We won't be closing the Slack right away for the Elevated Experience. Hopefully we will be having time to do additional debriefs afterwards. And if there's any questions, we can still use that Slack channel. Yeah, that's a wrap. And it's been a really good ACR. I am exhausted, but exhausted because we did so much for the organization. And I'm so excited to see what comes from ACR this year. I hope you all have a great day wherever you are. I like to practice a lot of mindfulness. So if you're watching this video all the way to the end, let's make sure let's take five deep breaths and think about something that makes us happy or think about something that makes us thankful. And we can do that together. And I'll talk to you all later. Bye.